everybody, this is Heather Sides. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Spokane, Washington. And once a month I come to you with an alternate paper pumpkin kit ideas video. And uh, this week's, or this month's kit, Spooky Treats, is really fun. It's cute, I love the colors, there's a lot of great things about it, and I can't wait to share with you what I've come up with. So, um, I'm just giving a minute or so for everybody to find me and get on here. And in that time, I'm going to go ahead and check and make sure uh, that everything is showing up on my big screen so that I can see your comments. Speaking of comments, I do encourage you to participate in the conversation. Talk to each other. Talk to me. Um, excuse me. I'm trying to move things out of the way of the dog. Um, but participate, because that does make it even more fun around here. So, um Let's see what I've got going on here. Just waiting for it to show up on the screen. And some kind, sometimes it's a little bit of a test um, to get it going here. Okay, so I've got it. Oops, so, and now I need to mute it. Let's, let's see, see what I've got. Oh, okay, now I'm muted. So you only have to listen to me once. Uh, looks like we've got a few people here. Hey, Robin, welcome. Um, for those of you who don't follow my Wednesday night videos, uh, Robin actually sent me her paper pumpkin kit this month. Um, I I made a mistake. I thought I had one more month of my subscription left. I didn't and found out, realized it too late um, to get it. And so Robin sent me hers so that I could continue to bring these videos to you. So thank you again to Robin. Uh, we've got Teresa here, Kathy's here. So welcome everybody. Um, like I said, I'm excited to show you what I've got because I really enjoyed this month's kit. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's very, very cute. Um, just to tell you about a couple of specials that are coming up that they announced, Stampin' Up! announced today uh, at the World Card Making event. Hey Judy, welcome, Yvette, hello. Um, how many of you guys attended the World Card Making event that Stampin' Up! Um, did. I, I caught most of it and um, it was kind of fun. Saw some new stuff that's coming out. That's always exciting. But I want to tell you about a couple of specials that are going on. In case you weren't there, uh, you'll want to know about these specials. First one is that uh, there is a new stamp set coming out and right off the top of my head, I can't think of what it's called, but you'll be able to see it on my website November 1st. Now, it's, it's fun. It's um, floral and greenery and um, it's done in such a way that you could make it Christmassy if you want to make Christmas cards with it, but it really is very versatile to use year round. So um, I like it. I think it looks like a great set. Um, if you are a demonstrator, you actually can purchase it October 1st. That's one of the benefits of being a demonstrator is you get early access to a lot of the products. So October 1st for demonstrators, November 1st for customers. So if you are not a demonstrator, you'll be able to um, see the set and find out a little bit more about it November 1st on my website, um, which is heathersides.stampinup.net. And I think you'll love this stamp set. I really do. It's a bundle because there's uh, coordinating dies. So that's coming out on uh, November 1st for um, customers, October 1st for demonstrators. Another special is October 4th for qualifying orders of $75 or more in the U.S. Uh, free shipping all day. So if you've got an order coming up, uh, remember shipping is like 10% or 12%, something like that. And that's kind of a chunk of change. So if you've got an order coming up, um, a list of things in your head that you're wanting to get, the fourth is the day to do it because you can save uh, that money on shipping. And then finally, um, also starting October 4th through the end of the month, we have a um, special on our kit. When you sign up to become a demonstrator, normally you would pay $99 and get $125 worth of products of your choice. Um, and then you'd also get about another $50 worth of products for free. Uh, I'm sorry, not products, but products plus free shipping um, comes to about $50 because you get a paper pumpkin kit and you get the free shipping. And then of course you get the basic business supplies in case you want to do it as a business, but you don't have to. Um, but anyway, in addition to all of that, in addition to the $125 uh, that you normally would pick out in, for, in merchandise, you get to pick out $100 $55 during the month of October. That's $30 of extra product for free. 
So same price, same $99 kit, but you get $30 more worth of product. So October is a fantastic time to give it a whirl. Try it. See what you think. If, um, if after 90 days you decide, nah, this isn't for me. I don't want to be a demonstrator. Um, no harm, no foul. You just go back to being a customer. But the nice thing is we have all different um, levels of demonstrators, so to speak. Um, you know, we've got, of course, the big business builders who are just doing gangbusters and amazing things in their business. We have demonstrators who, you know, just make enough money to support their own habit. And then we have demonstrators that um, sometimes call hobbyists or um, happy shoppers, and they're just in it to get the discount. And um, that's perfectly okay too. Stampin' Up! does not discriminate against any of those types of um, demonstrators. You get all the same benefits of, as every other demonstrator, no matter what level you're at. So that too might be something that you want to consider doing during the month of October. If you have any questions about it, please uh, send me an email or send me a message here on Facebook. Um, you can also check it out on my website. There's a button that you click on. I think it's join or join my team and you can find out more information there. You can also sign up directly right there, uh, but I'm available if you have any questions. So um, I think that's all the specials I have to tell you about. Let's go ahead and turn this camera around and talk about this month's Paper Pumpkin Kit. Are you ready to go? Okay, here we go. Hey, Talina, welcome. Okay. Get my camera all set up here. Oh, I stood up a little too fast and gave myself a head rush. I hate that. My husband, my son loves head rushes. Um, let's see. Yes, Robin, that's a really, really good point. Um, say that you're somebody who, you know, you're an active stamper. You already have a lot of things. You With the $155 worth of products, you could pick the stamping, the cutting and embossing machine, plus get $30 more worth of products. So, because I know... That machine is a little pricey and um, sometimes people are hesitant to get it because of the price. So get that with your kit. Um, that's a great way to do it. Oh, and Fitting Florets is the name of the stamp set. Thank you very much, Robin. And uh, you, you know what? Uh, Kathy asked, is it the 1st of October or the 4th of October? It's the 4th. If I said the 1st, um, ignore me. It was the fourth. All of the specials that begin in October or um, are available to demonstrators in October begin on the fourth. So uh, Talina says she did went to the event. She really likes that new suite that's coming out. Um, Yvette, I wonder if they recorded it that maybe you could watch it later since it was a free event. Maybe they did. You should check it out though because there were some great demonstrations. Um, very good fast pace easy to you know good flow uh so it was a it was a nice event um let's see oh talina that's just crazy talina says she likes bed spins oh i i can't handle it i i just can't handle it okay so you guys this month's paper pumpkin kit Look at this, you guys. I made a huge mess of this one. I it is very well loved. Now let me show you. Um, you know, when you get your kit, you get a stampin' spot, you get a set of stamps, you get um, all the supplies to make uh, typically three different types of a card or project, and the quantity just kind of depends on what it is. This month. It was these adorable little treat boxes, and I did make some of them, so I'm going to show you in just a minute um, how they turned out. They're really, really cute. Um, and the color for the ink spot was Orchid Oasis, which is one of our new um, in colors this year. And then, of course, all my little scraps from the dyes. And I mean, I just had a ton of fun, you guys. I love this, and I, I'm kind of excited to play with it a little more um, to make some Halloween cards, maybe for my coworkers at work or something. So um, anyway, that that is this month's kit. And the treat boxes, these are the treat boxes um, that the kit makes, and it makes six of each one. And let me show you, they open up this way, these adorable little boxes. Hey, Marsha, welcome. Um, but aren't these just 
so, so, so cute. These um, designs are the ones, oh, this one's upside down. These uh, are the designs done by Stampin' Up. Um, I did not create them, I just copied them. But let me show you something else I did. Just for grins and giggles, I decided to take the items that were used to make each of the boxes and make a card. And I tried not to really deviate much from the style or design. Um, I didn't really add any other products. I could have. And, and for me, it was kind of tempting to do. Um, by the way, Talina says, yes, the World Card Making event was recorded and the recording is already up. So um, if you want to watch that, you can go to their website and see it. Hey, Jennifer, welcome. So anyway, I made these cards. They're a little simple for my taste, but I wanted to show you how easy it was to convert these to cards, and then they could easily be stepped up with gems and ribbons and, you know, anything like that. But I tried to stick to just the products that were used on each of the particular boxes. So on this box, let me move these out of the way. So with this box, I made this card. Let's see if I did anything fun on the inside. That's what I did to the inside. So there's that one. Then for this box, I did this card. Again, very simple. That's what I did on the inside. So they match. And then for this box, this box was my favorite. I did this card. Did I do anything fun on the inside? See, I kept it pretty similar or simple on the insides. So uh, like I said, you can see that even when the kit is for a craft type of project, such as these boxes, rather than a card, you can fairly easily convert to um, making cards instead, if that's your preference. So let's put these away, and we'll get going on the fun stuff that I have to show you tonight. And I did, of course, make a few extra cards to show you as well. Okay, so this first card we're going to make, this one's a little bright, um, but I made it with these little ghosties and our gingham ribbon. And you know, we can, you can color the gingham ribbon. It's normally black and white, and you can use your Stampin' Blend markers to color it. And in this case, I used the three colors to, um, let's see if you can see, because you can see I did the blue and the orange and the purple and colored my ribbon to match the three colors of the card. Um, and there's the inside of the card. So let's go ahead and get going on this. We'll start with our, well, actually I'd say we'd start with our envelope, but let's start with all of the pieces that need to be stamped. And that includes um, the envelope. Move the other pieces out of the way here. And the colors we're going to use and they, I pretty much, for the most part, used these colors throughout um, throughout all of my projects. I have the Memento Black. I have Fresh Freesia, Orchid, or wait, Orchid Oasis, and Pumpkin Pie. Um, yes, if you would, that'd be great, Talina. Talina has offered to post a link to the um, World Card Making Day video. And yeah, that would be great because if you haven't watched it, I think um, you'll really enjoy it. Like I said, the presentations were good and they're fairly short, so they go quickly. Um, so you're not just sitting there the whole time and getting antsy. I know I can't sit still for very long. So, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is um, take, thank you, hang on here. I'm using the watercolor shapes stamps and we're using this smaller rectangle stamp. And I'm gonna stamp little orange bars here. Let's see, about room for one, two, three. One, two, three, there we go. Clean it off, because now I'm gonna go for the next colors. Looks like I got a little bit of the orange on there, but that's okay. It'll probably be covered up with the blue, and that blue is pretty bright, so I'm not too terribly worried about it. I should have done the orange on all my pieces, but that's okay. Okay, so now the blue. This is the Orchid Oasis. There we go. See, I just stamped over that little orange piece that I didn't like, and 
Now we're just fine. Okay, clean this off. This one you really want to clean off because the next color I'm going to use is the uh, Fresh Freesia, and it's a really light color. So you don't want that blue coming through. Carla has joined us. Welcome, Carla. We're just get, getting going on the first card. Okay, actually, that looks like that's all we've got there. Okay, so now our envelope is done. If you don't want that quite as bright, you could stamp off uh, first so that you've got um, a lighter image. Stamping off is where you ink up your stamp and then you stamp on a piece of scrap paper before you stamp on your um, card making project. Um, so there's less ink on the stamp and therefore it's not quite as bright. So now what I'm gonna do, let's just get all the ink pads going. I'm gonna live dangerously and put all the ink pads out. You guys know what happens when I leave ink pads out. I tend to lay down in them. Okay. Okay, so just gonna stamp, just like I did on my um, envelope. Ooh. There we go. And then um, this is the inside of the card. And I'm just going to do one down here in this corner. Okay. Now I'm going to use the Orchid Oasis. And I'm not really doing any... Um, precise pattern or anything like that. I'm just kind of putting them on there. Um, it just adds a little fun to it, I think, when it's not quite as precise and exact. The other thing is it makes it easier to do uh, mass production. So, um, oh, thank you, Jennifer. That's really sweet of you. Oh, and thank you, Talina. Talina pointed out that if you're just wanting to see what the new suite of products is, you can um, you can go to one min one hour, 19 minutes, and 50 seconds to see it. Okay. Oh, we got to do one on here. All right. Now, we've got our adorable little ghosty. I love this little ghost. I think he's really cute. And what I did with him, hang on, I want to see something here. Okay, I need my black ink now for everything else. So let's put these away before I do something dangerous. Okay. Okay. Now, this one, I put him in the corner just kind of peeking. Peeking in. And then on here, I just kind of went like this. And I found that my spacing didn't quite allow for um, entire ghosts. So go ahead and go off the edge. See in here, it's gonna get just the very edge but you'll still be able to see it looked like there was another one there. And I just cleaned my ink pad and yeah, I needed to do that. I was going to say I didn't need to clean it yet, but I did. And then on the inside, let's also take this stamp. It says trick or treat. And I'm just going to put it right in there. There we go. And now... We're gonna color our ribbon, which is, I actually should have done first. Um, just so that you know, I do recommend whenever you color your ribbon, and most of our ribbons can be colored, but when you do, I recommend doing it first because it just gives that ink a little bit extra to dry before you're running your fingers across it and tying a bow and then getting the ink all over your fingers. Um, 
but if you use your blends, it still goes pretty, they still dries pretty quickly because it is um, alcohol based. So normally I use my brush tip for this, but my pumpkin pie, I apparently used a lot. I didn't realize um, because that one is going dry. So I'm using my regular tip here. See how fast and easy that goes when you use the brush tip and I'm just doing one color right after the other whoops flip over silly so my husband is in Minneapolis today he is running a marathon tomorrow um, he's he's kind of one of those weirdos that he gets up at four in the morning to go running um, you know I'm bitter if I have to get up to go to the bathroom at four in the morning. So you're not going to get me up to exercise. Well, I don't get up to exercise at any time. Um, not that that's necessarily good for me, but I'm certainly not doing it at four in the morning. Um, but anyway, he's excited for this run. He's feeling good about it. This is his second marathon that he's run. Um, and I am proud of him. He's worked really, really hard um, to try to beat previous times. His goal is to be able to qualify for the Boston Marathon. And apparently, I don't, I didn't know this before, um, but apparently you can't just sign up to be in the Boston Marathon. You have to actually qualify. And there are certain qualifying races throughout the year, throughout the country, that you can run that will qualify you um, if you get a certain time. And what you do is you run it and then have them submit your time to uh, the Boston Marathon people when you apply to run. And if you run it in a certain time or less, then they allow you to run the Boston. Um, but yeah, slow fat people can't run it like me. Um, not that slow fat people like me would run it. Um, I mean, I get tired driving that far. So, um, okay. So now for our card base, as you see, we got our ribbon. Isn't that pretty doing the um, spectrum of colors like that? I just love that. Okay. So um, our card base is the Orchid Oasis. And it's just a half a sheet of cardstock, eight and a half inches by five and a half inches, uh, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. And now what we're going to do, here's our inside piece. Let's go ahead and um, stick it down. I have a feeling I'm going to have to uh, refill my seal plus here during this live. So I actually planned ahead and brought a refill over here should I need it. Um, look at me planning ahead. Okay, so stick this piece in here. Thank you, Jennifer. That's really nice of you. Uh, Jennifer says she wishes him luck. Yeah, Talina's also married to one of those running weirdos, um, except for he works for a couple hours and then takes his break to go running. To me, that still makes more sense than getting out of bed at four in the morning. But your dad, husband gets out of bed at like four in the morning anyway to go to work. Um, okay, so now we have our ribbon. We're going to tie a bow here. Now, a little trick. You can see I pulled it a little tight and my edges are coming up. I do that on purpose because it tends to loosen up a bit as I'm tying the bow. So if I start with it a little too tight, then my hope is that it, it'll be the right tension um, when I actually have the bow done. And it is. See how it totally flattened out? It's because it loosened up. Okay, so now I'm just going to play with this to get... Um, my loops and my tails going the directions that I want them to go and the size I want them to be. This is the first time I've done this where I've done multiple colors on the ribbon and I have to say I'm patting myself on the back for it. I really like it and I think I'm going to do it more often. Okay, there's our bow and I'm just going to wiggle this around because I want my bow to be sort of off to the side a little bit like that and then push it up toward the top. Now it's probably not going to go anywhere because we're going to have um, our little ghosties down here blocking it 
but I'm gonna show you another little trick. It just helps to hold it all in place. First, let's go ahead and trim the tails. Okay, oops. Looks like that one is quite a bit longer than the other. There we go. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a glue dot and I'm gonna put it right behind the knot of my bow. And that's just gonna hold it in place so that my um, ribbon's not gonna move all around. Normally it's not an issue because I have wrapped it around a piece that is then adhered to the front of the card. But since it's on the front of the card, I just don't like the idea of it wiggling around and going somewhere I don't want it to go. So I just put that little glue dot there and now that baby's not moving. So let's glue these pieces together. Looks like that's fairly straight, but it's a little long on this side, so I'm just going to trim it down a little bit. It's still a little tiny bit long. Okay, now let's go ahead and stick this down to our card. I'm shedding like a husky in the spring. Good grief. And, um, I, I know that I send out cards with hairs attached, and I'm sure people just absolutely love that. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this, I wanna kind of center it between my ribbon and the bottom of my card. So I'm not centering it on the card itself, I'm centering it on this lower section. Make sure it's straight. And there we go, card number one. Easy peasy, lots of color, lots of fun. There we go. Oh, you know what? I didn't put any ghosts on the envelope. Let's, you know, I kind of like it without the ghosts on the envelope too. What do you guys think? Ghosts on the envelope or leave it as it is? I'll give you guys a second. I know you do, Talina, so I knew you would understand. Jennifer, I don't know why I never thought of doing that either, but I really, really like it. <laughs> Okay, so um, Jennifer wants to make this card right now, but she needs to buy the kit first. Well, you know what's kind of fun about it is the watercolor shapes are available in the annual catalog. So you could make this exact same card with any other stamp set, really. And you know what I forgot to do on this one that I did on this one, and it's okay. On, on my sample one, um, Teresa says without ghosts, by the way. Uh, Judy says leave it. Got a couple votes for leave it. I think I'm going to. Um, I took my Orchid Oasis and I stamped the trick or treat stamp all over on the card base before I put this down. I forgot to do that on this one. So it still looks good. I still like it. Um, so yeah, this card will be a little bit different. And we're moving on without ghosts on our envelope. All right, card number two. Okay, card number two is so simple, and it's probably my favorite one. I really love how it turned out. So this is card number two. You got your bats on the envelope, and then look at this. How simple is that? And what I did is we had these little strips were die cuts in the kit. Um, these ones were actually twice as wide, and I trimmed them down so that they were only about a... Um, little under a half an inch. And then there's the inside. Easy peasy. So let's get going on this card. Let's damp some bats all over our envelope. Nope, that's not a bat. That's bats. I don't know if you can see it very well, but um, yeah, you can see it on the screen. It's three little bats there. Yes, I love to find ways to use up the scrap um, DSP or um, 
die cuts or whatever, Teresa. And so this is such a simple way to do it. And, and I love the way it turns out. Okay. I think I tried to do it, I think it was last month, but the patterns were really busy. And um, yeah, it didn't look so great. So here I'm just putting bats all over as one does. So now we have our bats all over the envelope. I also want to put bats on the inside piece of our card, just in the lower corner. So let's go ahead and do that while we have the ink out. I'll just put it right here like this. And then one other little bit of stamping. We're going to stamp our sentiment on the bottom of our front piece so we can go ahead and do that now as well and this one is just simple happy halloween i probably used this one the most there's one in there in the kit that says enjoy this treat obviously because you know it's treat boxes but because i was making cards i didn't use that one a whole lot in fact i think i only used it on the treat box okay so there's our stamping is done. Now we just need to piece it all together. See, I told you it was super easy. So we're gonna start with our card base, which is a half of a sheet, eight and a half by five and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. You guys probably think I say that in my sleep, and you know what? You're probably not wrong. Okay. So we'll go ahead and put in our little piece that goes on the inside. Oops, put a little more on there than I needed to, but that's okay. Stick that down. Now the inside's done. This piece can go ahead and get mounted onto our piece of black already. So let's do that. Okay, try to get it nice and straight there. Okay, now I'm gonna wait. I could go ahead and put this on my card now, but I'm gonna wait. And the reason behind that is because, you know, if I were to really muck it up, I could throw this piece out if I needed to or repurpose it or whatever. I don't wanna have to, um, you know, throw the whole card out. So now I've got all these little strips and, you know, the way I decide, you know, I always lay them out, do a dry run first and lay them out and kind of figure out how do I like these before um, I do anything else. So what I did is I recognized that I needed to have right about middle these two pieces. So let's go ahead and lay them down. And while I did try to lay them straight as far as uh, horizontal placement goes, um, the, let me see, I'm trying to make sure I say this right. Is it the horizontal placement? From this way. So vertical placement, I tried to make them straight. Horizontal placement going this way, I let them go all over the place just to give it a little bit of interest. The other thing is, if they're intentionally not straight, then it looks fine. It's when, you ac when you're trying to get them straight and you get them crooked that it looks funny. So if you're like me and couldn't do a straight line, if your life depended on it, make them crooked. Now that I've got those two on, I'll start filling in all the pieces around them. But I usually try to start with my middle piece um, just because that gives me a good jumping off point where I know, okay, this is gonna be the center and then I can build everything around it instead of maybe starting at the top and then ending up way higher or way lower than I meant to. Um, this way I still end up roughly where I intended to end up. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it to make sure I've got approximately the same distance between strips.
you know, I always do this. I get like halfway through my video and realize I don't have my glasses on and, um, and think, what a brilliant idea. I should put my glasses on. You'd think the fact that for half the video I couldn't see anything would have been my first indicator. Okay. Ooh, they're dirty. I can't see real well with them anyway. Okay, now we'll put this piece on. A little bit of glue goes a very long way, remember. See, we're almost done with this card already. This goes really fast. Now, of course, it does take a little longer when you're trying to figure out your placement and what pieces you're gonna use and cutting them and everything like that, which I, of course, did um, when I made my demo one first. So that doesn't factor into making this particular card. But really, it's it, I think this is probably one of my favorite styles of card to make just because it is really quick and simple. Okay, see? Now let's finish it off by putting a few um, black matte dots on there. I love the black matte dots. They're just nice and basic. They give a little something, especially if you don't want something sparkly, but you want something. I like, I like it for that. Come back, come to me. Now we can go ahead and stick it onto our card, and it's done. Nice and simple, right? Ugh. Yeah, I'm definitely getting near the end of um, this particular seal. Okay. Eyeball this to make sure it's straight-ish because I think ish is as close as I'm going to get. All right, there we go. What do you guys think with our little bat envelope? Very cute, very simple. The other thing I like about this is it could be um, for a child or an adult. It could be for a man or a woman. It really um, is very generic in that regard without being boring, um, but you could really use it for just about anybody. Okay, now let's do our last one. I'm super excited about our last one. Um, I'm kind of a sucker for shaker cards. So, of course, when I saw... Where is it? When I saw this piece right here, this white piece, I knew I had to make a shaker card. And I tried all sorts of different things to put in the shake as shaker pieces. It actually was quite humorous. It took me forever. Now you can see I ended up making these little circles. Um, I looked everywhere for my circular hole punch um, because I thought, oh, little circles that size would be perfect to make confetti to put in there. Couldn't find it anywhere. And it turned out it was in my little toolbox of all the tools that I use all the time. And Talina, tell Eric, I said, case away. Um, so I think think we might put fewer of the pieces inside on this one because earlier I was trying to play with this and the circles all kept getting stuck like they'd pile on top of one another and they'd get stuck so can you see that the pieces are moving I'm trying to shake it so you can see without you know making you seasick okay so that's the front that's the inside of the card and it really it looks like a lot uh, but it's actually quite simple, so let's go ahead and get started on it. Oh, and this is our envelope with the little spiders crawling across. Blech. I don't like spiders. Okay, so let's go ahead and stamp our envelope first. We're going to use the Fresh Freesia to stamp the spiders. Nope, that's the spider web. There's my little spider. I have to figure out which end is his head. Okay, found his head. And then I'm just gonna kind of do a little bit of an S pattern. It's not too um, specific. I mean, 
you don't have to necessarily trace it out first. Just do a little curve with each one. Go up or down, whichever direction you wanted to go with it. And all you have to do is just a tiny bit of change in the angle with each one, and you'll get a pretty smooth little um, trail. Okay, so the envelope is done. If we do the piece that goes on the inside of our card. What I did with that one is I did use that um, spider web that I keep picking up and trying to use. So I put it right here in the corner, just like so. And then I took the spider Again, trying to find her little head so I know where to um, which end which direction to have her go and then I'm taking my black um, stamp and write marker and I'm taking the fine tip and just very carefully drawing a straight line up to my spider web to have her coming down like that and then I've got this little strip right here that um, I cut apart one of the little box things. Hey, Marcy, thanks for joining us, welcome. So let's go ahead and glue this piece on there. Oops, let's put the black ink pad away, you know, before something really tragic happens. Okay, and I'm just gonna glue this right to the bottom of my piece of basic white, just like that. And then we'll trim off the extra. Oops, looks like it's kind of coming off the edge there. Okay, and now we can put this on the inside of our card and be done with this piece. This piece is just a half a sheet um, of basic black cardstock. So let's go ahead and glue this to the inside. have any good Lucy stories for you today. Um, with my husband out of town, I was really tempted to let her sleep with me um, because she does like in the morning after um, Bill gets up with her and feeds her and all that, she comes and crawls into bed with me until I get up um, and does fine. So I was tempted to let her sleep with me, but she, you know, she's not 100% reliable in the housebreaking yet. And um, I could just see, and she still wakes up during the night to be let out. So I could see her just you know, getting up and not telling me she needed to go to the bathroom and just doing it. So, um, so she didn't get to sleep with me, but I can't wait till she does. Cause I love it. She's so snuggly. She's very, very snuggly. Okay. So there's the inside. Now I have these two little strips. Let's go ahead and glue them together and put them on the card. Take care of all these really easy peasy pieces, right? Actually, the whole thing is pretty easy peasy, um, but I do know shaker cards are intimidating to some people. I know they were to me before I kind of figured out how to do them. Once I figured out how to do them, I was like, oh, this is a lot easier than I thought they'd be. Um, and so now I like to make them whenever I can. Robin, I do too. Snuggly pets are the best. In fact, I have, I'll have i admit, snuggly, snuggliness is why I need a dog. You know, I want somebody to snuggle with me. And Lucy, like I said, you know, some dogs are snugglier than others. Lucy is very snuggly. She gives hugs, actually. That was one of the things that sold me on her in the beginning. She wraps her little arms around your neck and hugs you. It's so sweet. Okay, so now I'm just going to stick this on there like that. Oops. And we do have our little sentiment piece. Let's go ahead and do that now. We might as well put it on. And I'm going to stamp using the Orchid Oasis. Oh, nice. My stamp is stuck to my ink pad. And I'm going to use the Trick or Treat stamp. 
Yeah, I used to love to carry um, Lucy to bed at night because she would hug me the whole way. And then before I would put her in her crate, she'd hug me even tighter because she didn't want to have to go in there. And um, But now, you know, she's too big for me to carry her like that. My son still can and my husband can, but I'm a wimp. So I have like no strength whatsoever. Okay, there we go. But yeah, it's very sad to me that I can't, you know, get my hugs all the way to bed anymore. Um, but like when she gets up in the morning, the first thing she wants to do is stand up on her hind legs and hug me. So I, you know, kneel down so that she can. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and stick this down. Normally, you know, your sentiment is the last piece you put on there. Um, but this works. Okay, so now let's build our shaker. Got a couple of these spiders, which I think are adorable, and I don't even like spiders. Um, yes, I did, Marcy. Marcy's asking about, um, I had to wear a heart monitor for two weeks. Okay, back up. I was supposed to have shoulder surgery. The day before my surgery, the anesthesiologist um, looked at my pre-surgical EKG, and he said, oh, I don't like this. This looks ugly. Uh, I want the cardiologist to sign off on you having the surgery. The cardiologist looked at it and said, no way, I'm not signing off on that. Um, I tried to tell them there, it was a bad day. There really is nothing wrong. Um, but you know, they have to play it safe. So I had to wear a heart monitor for two weeks. I went in on Thursday and he looked at it and he said, this looks really good. I don't see anything wrong. Shocker. Uh, I don't see anything wrong. I'll sign you off for surgery. And then the next thing I know, all of a sudden he's talking about doing, um, an echocardiogram just to be safe. So that's pushing the surgery back again because now I have to wait to schedule the echocardiogram and then schedule the follow-up with the cardiologist on that. And then I can get scheduled for my surgery. It's driving me crazy because my neck and my shoulder are killing me and I'd really like to get this surgery. Okay, so I have these two pieces and this was one of the box um, pieces. It wrapped around the box and I just trimmed it so that it was just this piece. And here's what we're gonna do. First, we take, oh, I didn't put my little piece of acetate in here. So let me measure this so I can get a piece of acetate real quick. So it's two and a half by three inches. Hold that thought. Okay, so here's my piece of acetate, and um, I cut it just slightly smaller than this piece. Um, this piece is two and a half by three inches. So I just cut it a sixteenth of an inch smaller on each side. So it's still relatively close to the same, but it, um, I don't, I didn't want to risk it being just slightly bigger and uh, sticking out from behind the white piece. This has little um, blotches or, you know, whatever all over it. So I'm just kind of trying to wash it off a little bit. Now, another thing that I should have done, um, which also helps with shaker cards, is to take a dryer sheet and rub it all over um, because that helps take some of the static out of it. Gosh, this is really yucky. It's got some, you know, it, I just have a shelf that I keep this on. I don't know what possibly got all over it. And I'm just cleaning it here with water and a paper towel. The Windex would probably be even better. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I need to put a little adhesive on here for my acetate. Now, I could use my liquid glue, but I'm worried about how it does take a little while to set. So what I am doing is I am taking my uh, Terran tape, which did this kit did come with. Um, a roll of tear and tape, 
and I'm just going along the edge here. Whoops. Now I'm throwing stuff on the ground. I'm trying to make sure that it does not go past the inner edge of this frame. If it goes past the outer edge, that's not a huge deal. Um, I can tell that it is because it's sticking a little bit to my work surface. And I'm gonna show you why it's not a huge deal because it's e super easy to work around that. Okay. Now take my bone folder and just kind of press that tape down to make sure it's nicely adhered to the cardstock. And then take my take your pick tool. Oh my goodness, let's see here. There, let there be light. I always forget to do that. Okay. Okay, now, I don't, if you can see this, you probably can't, oh, you can see it on the camera a little bit. You can see where my adhesive went beyond the frame here, right? All you have to do is take your finger and fold it back. Fold it on back on itself. See, that's not a big deal to do. That would have been harder to do on these inside pieces where all that detail is. So that's why I said, just make sure that you don't go over the edge on the inside. And then if you go over the edge on the outside, it's easy to fix. I do this all the time. Okay, now I'm gonna take my piece of acetate and I'm gonna put it on there. Remember, it's only just a tiny bit smaller than the white. Um, so you gotta be careful laying it down. Okay, so now we have the front part of our shaker cart. What I'm gonna do now is take, these are our foam adhesive strips. You can see it comes, um, you get two of these sheets right here and all these strips and they last for gosh darn near eternity. So um, like I've been out this, this time around for about two years and I've bought these once. Okay, so I'm just, lining up along the edge of my frame. Take my scissors. These um, strips are great because they're very um, shapeable, I guess I could say. So if you're doing like a circle or whatever, it's really easy to work that through um, to do exactly what I'm doing now, but having it go around a circle. Okay. And you do want to make sure that these edges match up um, because, you know, it doesn't matter. It's not so much an issue in this case where our shaker bits are bigger, but usually your shaker bits are smaller and you don't want them sneaking out um, because there's open spaces. The other thing, um, okay, ah, uh, poo. I did this backwards. That's okay. That is okay. We could do it this way and have our, no, we, we want, oh, we'll just go, do we wanna go like that? No, we'll go like that, I'll survive. Um, I forgot to leave room for my um, spider thing to come down, but I'll show you how to fix that too. And by spider thing, I mean the spider. <laughs> okay. And now I just need a tiny little bit for that last section. So I just match it right up there. There we go. And what I don't use, I just put back on the backing. There we go, and put it back in the bag for next time. Oh goodness, 
Who thought putting it back in the bag would be the hardest part of the whole thing? There we go. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, um, remember I, <laughs> what I should have done before I laid this piece down is I should have laid down a little spider. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking my take your pick tool. You know, I use it for everything. It's my favorite tool. And I'm poking a hole right here in my foam, kind of lifting it up a little because I can slide that little spider, um, the little web piece that he's crawling down, slide it right in there. So um, let me see how, how much I want to cut off. I know I'm going to need to cut some off. Okay, so I find that little hole. Oh, how about if I make the spider face the right direction though? That's important. There we go. And if you need to, you can glue that down. Like I could just put a little drop of glue right in there. Easier said than done, I guess. I do want my spider to be coming down straight. I'm gonna hold it there for just a moment to let the glue start to get a little tacky so that it will stay where I want it to. Now what I my intention had been, just so you know, is to lay it down, lay the spider on there before I put my adhesive strip down. So that's where I went wrong. But again, you saw how easy it was to fix that. Then I have another spider that I'm gonna do um, this with. And I think I want him to be just a little bit shorter. Well, I mean, if they're about the same, it's okay. Let's see, where does this guy end up? Yeah. Now this guy, what I'm gonna do is just place him right here on this on the foam adhesive strip. Da, da, da. And I'm going to put a dimensional, a couple of dimensionals on him. I'm gonna use the little mini ones. Am I gonna, no, the dimensionals are gonna go on this guy right here. There we go. Um, you can see he's still wiggling around a little bit. This one, I'm gonna use regular adhesive, but um, I'm gonna wait uh, to put that adhesive on because I still have a few things I need to do with this card before um, I'm ready to lay it down, or with this piece before I'm ready to lay it down on the card. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the backing off Okay, now here's the part that's just a little bit tricky. This piece needs to go on the back after we've put our little pieces in. So what I wanna do, well, let's put our little pieces in first. And I think I'm gonna put fewer of them in this one because like I said, they kept kind of getting blocked up, my other one. So I did, let's see, I think I had four pieces of each one. Let's just do two of each one this time. I'm just putting them in there. I'm putting them so that the front faces forward. I'm wondering, maybe I need to put one more in for each one. Hmm. I guess I had five in there before. Let's go with three this time around. Two. And one. And that one, flip that over. I just used, um, to make these circles, I actually just used a retired set um, that had these tiny little circles. But like I said before, just a regular hole punch. I'll show you because I know where my hole punch is now. 
just a regular hole punch, I could have punched out a whole bunch of those little circles and I think those would have been perfect. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up using my grid paper so that I know exactly where it is. I know that this piece is a quarter of an inch bigger, so I just want it to be roughly a quarter of an inch bigger than these markings here where I know where my rectangle is, okay? So, about like that. Oh, poo. It is a little crooked. But that's okay. If I wanted to, I could trim that down so it was a little more centered, but I'm not I'm not gonna sweat it. Okay, so now see all my little shaker bits move around in there. My little spider guy keeps moving. He's not supposed to do that, he's supposed to stay in place. Let's put a little bit of adhesive on this one. I'll just use a little bit of glue because it's right here. Okay. Now, we'll stick this down on our card. Uh oh one of my little shaker bits in there is upside down. Okay. Oh, ha, I didn't put any adhesive on this part. You could use any adhesive that you've got for this piece. I just happen to have this in my hand, so. Okay, let's line that up. Move this guy. There we go. Oops. Now we can take the back off of that those little dimensionals that we put on the back of this guy. Oh, and I forgot, I need to do double height. And the reason is because the um, Dimensionals are not quite as thick as the foam strips. So that's not a big, huge deal um, with this particular piece because I can lift it up and put the dimensionals right on top of the previous ones. Now, anyway, it's a little harder when you can't lift up the piece, um, but we can in this case, so it's not a big deal. So I'm just making um, double, double height so that it matches up with the height of the front of the card. Let's see here. There we go. So, card number two. A few changes to my original, some intentional, some not. But, you know, that's just part of stamping, right? So let's put some pieces away here. And we'll take a look at everything that we made tonight. We made some pretty good time. The cards were pretty simple. But it, you, that's usually the case with the paper pumpkin ones because so much of the work is already done for you, which is part of the beauty of paper pumpkin. Um, you can make quick and easy cards even if you choose to go off the beaten path and um, come up with your own designs or if you want to use the ones that Stampin' Up! provided. It's nice and quick. And um, it's kind of nice to have something like this in your arsenal. Because you never know when there's going to be a last minute need for a card of some sort. So let's clear some of this out of the way. If you guys liked what you saw tonight, um, I would love it if you um, gave me some thumbs up, some hearts. Those always make, in addition to making me feel good, they also help to tell um, the Facebook and uh, la la you. YouTube people, uh, the algorithm saying, hey, this is a good video. People are liking it. So maybe other people would like it. And then they put it out there in front of more people. So that helps me a lot. Another thing you can do that really helps me out is if you share this video. Again, it puts it out there to more people. And I really appreciate when you do that. If you saw some things that you liked tonight, maybe you want to sign up for the next paper pumpkin kit. There's some Christmas stuff coming out. Um, you can do that on my website. I would love to earn your business. My website with my online store is heathersides.stampinup.net. If your order is under $150, please use this host code. It really helps me. Thank you, Marsha. Marsha shared the video. Um, 
the code helps me to be able to continue to provide the videos for free, um, as well as the prizes that I give away on my Wednesday night live, which by the way, I also come every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time, same place, um, if you'd like to join us on Wednesdays. So anyway, if your order is under $150, please, it helps me if you use this host code. If your order is over $150, don't use the host code because you will have some um, free rewards coming to you from Stampin' Up! And I want to make sure that you are the one who receives them. So um, if you have any questions or anything like that, you are welcome to contact me at stamphappenings at gmail.com or here on Facebook, especially if you are interested in finding out more about joining my team uh, during that amazing special in October. I would love to be able to answer any questions that you have. Okay, so here are the cards we made tonight. We've got this cute little spider guy. We've got this one with the bats. And then we have this one with the ghosts. Ooh, they were trying to get away. And then, oh, but wait, there's more. I did make a few extras to share with you. I showed you the ones that I made that um, matched the boxes let's pull those out because you know we have our boxes um, that stampin up created and i made the cards that match but then i did make a few more as well so we've got this one i love this one i think it turned out really cute and see how i used just a little bit of our silver trim to make that little piece of well it's silk i guess the little piece of silk coming down um with the little spider and just a little pop of color with the purple. So we've got this one, got this one with the little ghosties and I used our um, stripes and splatters embossing folder to do that background. There's the inside of that one. And then finally this one, it's kind of a fun fold where I took some of those extra scraps and made this just like so. Ta-da! So these are some of the extras I made. There's still so much more that I could do. There was a lot of pieces in this kit, a lot of fun pattern cardstock. Um, so I might even play with it some more to make some special treats for people at work. I Again, I hope you liked what you guys saw. Um, thank you, Marcy. If I didn't say sh thank you for sharing to the group, I appreciate that. Um, to Lena says she can't wait to case these with her husband. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys had a great time tonight. I do love doing these videos because I love spending the time with you guys. I hope you guys um, have a great month of October if I don't see you before I do the next um, Paper Pumpkin video. But like I said, I also do this every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time. I'd love to see you then. Have a great one, you guys.